like to dive into my message this morning. But before I do, I do that, I would like to say good morning. Happy Sabbath day to everybody. God is good. And all the time. If you don't mind, I would like to begin with a prayer. Father in heaven, this moment is yours. Lord Jesus, your life for mine, a wretched sinner in need of your grace. Father God, all the good things that will be spoken today comes from you. Those things that make sense comes from you, O oh God. But those things may not be so pleasant and offensive, it comes from me. And so, Lord Jesus, use me as a vessel to speak to your people today. That their hearts will be drawn to the love of Jesus. We praise you for your great love. We praise you, dear Lord, for this freedom. That we could still worship and read our Bibles and just listen to your holy word. Lord, my foolishness, use my foolishness, Lord, that your people will be wiser. That they will know Jesus Christ in him crucified. As I ascend, Lord, to speak your words, <coughs> may I lift the cross of Jesus so that all men may be drawn to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Our title for this Sabbath lesson, uh, sermon is very unique, and it is very deliberate and purposeful. And the title of the sermon today is Nothing. What, everyone? Nothing. All right, if I... <coughs> Say my word already, nothing, and sit down. Will you be very happy today? I would like you to imagine with me, I would like you to open your mind's eyes and your eyes of faith as we journey together in the book of Romans. I will not be reading the whole book of Romans, but I would like you to imagine with, with me because we're going to zero in in Romans chapter 8. What do you want? I will not be reading all the entirety of Romans chapter 8, but I will just give you some ideas, probably three ideas, for the benefit of time, so that we will all be blessed. Now come with me in a journey or in a drive. For those of you who have just bought a new car, or have leased a new car, and you're so excited to drive your, your new SUV or your new car, I want you to imagine with me that there are 16 books, or 16 chapters in the book of Romans. How, ma how many? Are you with me? God is good. Open your Bibles with me now as, as we drive into that road. Now, Romans, the book of Romans was written by Paul in Corinth. You know, during the then known world, the Roman Empire was uh, the uh, superpower, so to speak. And so, Paul, as a Roman citizen by birth, he was freely uh, traveling because of his uh, citizenship, and he was enjoying that time during those times, the relative peace of Pax Romana, they call it the peace of Rome. And as we drive in Romans, from the, from the first chapter that we saw, we saw the great declaration of justification by faith, Romans chapter 1. The just shall live by faith, which Paul quoted in the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. And so as we drive and as we pedal through, we go into the great declaration of God's judgment. And then as we continue our drive, so to speak, we saw mileposts. And then we, we see from our experience as we travel through using the illustration as we drive. Chapter 3, which God defended His righteous judgment. And in chapter 4, and in chapter 4, dearly beloved, we are told, we are told of the story of faith, Abraham. And as we drive another milepost, another chapter is, is speaking to us that faith of the faith of Abraham 
had a triumph or triumphant. And then as we continue in our drive, we see that Paul was discussing about our dead to sin because we are alive in Christ Jesus. And then we come now to the, almost to the bridge. In, ver, in chapter 7, he spoke about his difficulty. Chapter 7, by the way, is a, is a chapter, if you read it, full of desperation. Full of frustration. And temporary defeat. But as we go to chapter 8, the most loved chapter, dearly beloved, I call it the bridge over troubled water as we go through the, the next milestone, mile post of Romans chapter 9, which is the rejection of the Israelites or the people of God. And chapter 10, the, the Jews will be the Jews will be given the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only to the Gentiles. And in chapter 11, there was the there was this great chapter about Israel, or the people of God will be saved. And in chapter uh, 12, it talks about living sacrifices. And chapter 13, submission to God. Chapter 14, law of liberty. Chapter 15, bear one another's burden. And then the last milepost of Romans, the final greeting. And encouragement. This is the book of Romans as we drive through with our new car or with, with our new SUV. Are you following me? Are we together, friends? Are you hearing me? We will not be reading all the entirety of the book of Romans, but I would like to encourage you to read through that. Now let's go to the to the to the bridge of Romans chapter 8. I love this verse. And I saw, as I read through this chapter, I saw that there are three central ideas, or three absolute central ideas, that in my, I, in my, in my mind's eyes, I would say, wow! The first one is found in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. I'd like you to open your Bibles there with me as we journey together. And as we drive through the book of Romans, open your Bibles with me. Are you all there? Romans chapter 8, verse 1. The first central idea. The Bible says, there is therefore, or in other words, Consequently, after arguing or after contending in chapter 7. You know, in chapter 7, Paul was magnifying the, the difficulty of, of, his, of his mind and the spirit. Of his, or, or the flesh, I mean. The mind, of the, the, the spirit is telling him to do this, but the flesh is telling him to do something else. It's kind of like a temptation, just like what our kids have heard this morning. And so in the great struggle, Paul now is in a contention. And he spoke, there, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, meaning of our carnal heart, but according to the spirit. In the chapter before that, Paul was mentioning about the law, that he is having difficulty in keeping the law. And in chapter 8, he talks more about the spirit of Jesus Christ. 31 times, so to speak. In the whole entire New Testament letters of Paul, I mean. What is condemnation? I checked the dictionary. Condemnation. It's a verb. It means to express strong Disapp disappointment. Have you tried that? Have you had that experience? You had expressed a strong disappointment. All right. Have you had that experience? How many of you have not had that experience? Dearly beloved, that's the definition of condemnation. Another definition of condemnation is to pronounce. When you pronounce, what do you use? To pronounce guilt or guilty. Another definition of condemnation is to convict. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the dictionary continues, it is to sentence. To destine to an unhappy fate 
Or if you have a home and you don't want to live in that anymore, it, to condemn means to declare that home unfit or not good for use because it is uninhabitable. Are you, are you following me? Are we together? Could you say God is good? All the time. That is the word condemnation. And I would like to give you a short, I would like to set the geographical and the, uh, the setting of Paul while he wrote this. Now remember, during that time, there was a relative peace in the then known Roman world, all right? It's Greco Roman Empire. The west portion of the empire of, the empire of, of Rome was Greek speaking because of the influence of the Hellenistic age. Have you heard about Hellenism? Brothers or sister? Have you heard about Hellenism? Yeah? It's where they got the Helen of Troy and, you know, the Greek influence. And on the eastern side of the. Uh, of that empire is what we call the romanticized Latin speaking. That is where the Spanish comes from. And they are always telling us that it's the language of heaven. I beg to disagree. I beg to disagree because I believe that also not English is not the, heaven of, the language of heaven. Are you following me? The language of heaven is the language of love. Uh, can I hear an amen? <laughs> uh, are we still together? Yes. And so that was the backdrop of Paul's writing to these Romans. And those, of the, uh, those who are present during that time, if you can travel to the Middle East, the Romans are great builders of roads. They are not only great in the Roman law, but they're also great in building roads, just like the Appian Way. That's a, one of the famous uh, roads in the then known world. It is well paved. It's not dusty road. It's well paved, paved and well guarded. Another example of that road which they use the Mediterranean Sea is what we call the Via Maris, the, the way of the sea all the way to the eastern side of the empire, all the way to the Holy Land, all the way Extending beyond going to India. And so Romans love to drive. Or, well, during those times, I'm so sorry, they don't have cars. They have, a, they have horses. They love to ride their horses. All right? Are, you are we together? Are we following together? But there is also one catch there. The Romans love their empire and they would like to preserve unity even though there are many religions there there are uh, what do you call they, they call it the syncretism of beliefs of the western and the eastern religions there are so many religions that are been mixed and so they come up with a solution and they converge that you know what let us worship our living emperor and they had set up these images and if you are not found Burning incense in the image of the emperor, you will be condemned by the authorities. Do you know how they condemn people who don't burn incense or worship God? Because they think those people are seditious or disloyal, rebellious. One of the methods of punishment is just uh, by torture. Mm -hmm. Another, probably the worst, let's go to the worst. Have you heard about crucifixion? That is the worst kind of condemnation. Why are, are they condemned? Because they don't want to bow down or burn incense to the image of the emperor. And you can just imagine in your mind's eyes with me, dearly beloved, that this is the context of the fledgling Christian church. 
During the time of Paul, there were not that many, but they were struggling because all of them, all of in their surroundings, in their environment, they're all pagans. They would burn incense and they would bow down to this uh, to these images, and they have this different Western and Eastern syncretic religion. And so the Christian who stood firm, loyal to Jesus, will not be burned. And so they are tortured. Sometimes they are dragged by horses, split apart, different opposite direction. So could you now imagine the word condemnation? Just by one word, just like that. You're condemned, you're not, you're not bowing. Condemnation equals death. Are we together? Are we on the same page? But praise be to God, the Bible says, there is therefore now no condemnation. Let me ask you this, why? Aha, uh -huh, simple. Because Jesus was resurrected and he is now in the right hand of God. Could you say amen? Because dearly beloved, the polar opposite of condemnation, the answer to the condemnation of the Romans is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they don't want to believe this. That's, that's why Paul has to say, therefore, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And incidentally, if you hear the, the message of Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, just, just go with me there in Matthew chapter 7, just after he spoke about the golden rule. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14. I would just like to, uh, to, to just incidentally... Uh, bring this up in our in our sermon this morning or this noon time. He says there, enter by the narrow gate. Do you know what narrow means? Uh, what is narrow? Huh? Do you like to enter into a narrow gate? Uh, do you like narrow gates? Some of you here, do you have narrow gates in your house? I don't have a house, but uh, I have a regular door. Okay, well, I, I'm renting. But those of you who are architects or builders, would you like to have a narrow gate or a narrow house? You don't want, right? The, Jesus used this as an illustration. Furthermore, for wide. What's the word? Uh, what's the difference between wide and narrow? Okay, uh, is this narrow? This is wide, right? So what is narrow? Uh, this is narrow. Is this narrow? Yes. Is this narrow? Yes. So this is narrow. That is why. And Jesus was saying, look at the at verse uh, 13. For wide. Listen now. Listen to me. Go with me in your sanctified imagination. For wide is the gate that leads to. This is what Jesus said. For wide. So if it's wide, what will happen, dearly beloved, if it's wide? There are many people who will be tempted to go, to go that direction, to go that way. And Jesus continues. And there are many. How many? Many who go in by it. Verse 14. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to? Which leads to? Life. And then Jesus continues there. And there are how many? Many and few. Wide and narrow. To walk in the flesh is just like walking in the wide way. Are you following me? All right, that, this is very comfortable. Uh, can you hear me? This is very convenient way. So what does going this way mean? Uh, means, let's open our Bible in the book of Galatians chapter 5. I'd just like to illustrate, maybe this is in the negative, but I would just like to speak this because this is from the Bible, the Word of God. Everybody, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Just before you um, reach the verse that says the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 18, and I would like to just read it. From the New King James Version Bible. 
The Bible says in verse 18, But you, who? Are you included there? Are you sure? If you are included there, can I, if you are included in the you, can I see your hands? Praise God. If you are not, then it's up to you. But you are led by the Spirit. You are not under the law. This makes sense, dearly beloved. Because if you are led by the Spirit, the law does not really affect you. But that doesn't mean that the law should be dealt away with. No, 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 no. Remember what James was saying about the law? The law is the mirror. The law is a royal law. A law of liberty. The law has no problem. Just imagine just like you have a mirror. How many of you here had a mirror in your house? Nobody has a mirror in your house? Are we together? Yes. This morning around 4 o'clock, I wake up and the first thing that I... You know, the first thing that I did was to pray and to go to where, everybody? Where? We happen to have a clean, nice bathroom because yours truly is the one cleaning it. That's my role. That's why when somebody was talking about how her husband was very good, I said, you, you rank number one. My, wa my wife ranks number three. All right? I don't know. It's, it just means that uh, I'm doing what I can to make my home clean, happy, and healthy. And in the bathroom, my friends, what do you see? Oh, boy. I look at the mirror, and I smiled. <laughs> Serious, I smiled. Because I read the previous night, I was reading my devotional, Psychology Science. So, what, everybody? Do you know what the word psychology means? This is a recent survey, and according to the survey, those who have not been smiling in their life, or in their pictures, in their photos, in their Facebooks, or in their Instagram, guess what will happen according to research? This is not what I said. Their chances of dying is higher than those who are always smiling. You got it from the psychology science, are you sure now? Look at those baseball players. Those who are smiling, they're still alive right now. They studied that in 1950. And those who have a straight face, well, what, what happens to them? They are now gone. And so I, <laughs> I smile at the mirror. The law is like a mirror, all right? I smile at the mirror and said to myself, you know, I'm not proud. Sometimes not conceited. And I said... What a great and awesome creature of God is in the mirror today. <laughs> uh, you don't do that? <laughs> that? Just don't let anybody hear it because they think you're crazy. I praise God for His creation. But I told myself when I did the side view, uh oh, the side view is not that worth telling. I just like the front view. The mirror, the law of God functions as a mirror. It tells you how God created you and you are sinning against His law. But it could not, it could never wash your sins and your, it could not make you look more handsome or prettier. Beloved, the law is not a problem. Our flesh is the problem. And these are the works of the flesh. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are, are evident. Which are, number one here, adultery. Fornication. Adultery is having sex after you got married with somebody else. And adultery is just not a simple problem, friends. Because it involves breakup, separation. If you, are found, if you are caught or if you are found out, right? That's why Jesus said, if you are committed, because in current, the, the, the immorality of sexual uh, nature is very rampant, right? Current, they have, a, they have an orgy of having sex during uh, their worship service. They have that. I'm so sorry if there are kids here. I'm so sorry. 
Adultery. This is the first because this is rampant during those times. But Jesus added to this in Matthew. I will not read to you. But he said something like this. Jesus added this. A very radical, revel revelatory and revolutionary thought. Okay, you Pharisees. You Pharisees, you think you're not committing physical ador adultery. But if you lust. What did I say, everybody? If you lust in your heart. Where did I say, everybody? In your heart. Yes, you may not have slept with somebody. But if you lust in your heart, you are committing what? You walk in the wide way. You, you walk in the, in the flesh. You are not in the spirit. Dearly beloved, this is just first of the many problems that we have adultery. And I would, not, I would not ask you to show your hands if you are lusting because our world is saturated with lust. Our music industry is saturated with lust. Our movies are saturated not only with violence, but lust. Satan had hijacked this world. They want people to lust not only after the flesh, but the pride of life. Fornication is the problem of so many young people. Sex before marriage, that is... The wide way. If you are, if you're in there, I don't know, but if you're there, you are in the wide, in the wide gate, which leads, by the way, where? <laughs> what about the narrow way? <laughs> to life, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentious, jealousy, outburst of wrath, selfish ambitions. This dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Listen to this now. I want you to listen to me very carefully. I don't want to be misunderstood in this, in this message. I want to give the message from God. The Bible says, I tell you beforehand, just like, as I also tell you in time past, that those. What did the word say? That those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Friends, I would like to confess to you today. I'll be the first one to confess to you today that I cannot inherit the kingdom of God right now. Why? I've been walking in the flesh. If not physically, but in my heart. But I don't need to confess that to you because I have confessed this to Jesus Christ and praise be to Him. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And I would like to tell you friends today, I am in Christ Jesus. Amen. For the sake of time, I would like to go to the second part. The first part that I saw in Romans 8 is not condemnation. The second part is no comparison. Are you following me? Oh, that's a nice word. No comparison. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, go back there please, if you're there. Let's doubt this word, Romans chapter 8. Verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be com compared with the glory which shall be revealed to, to us. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. What God has prepared for those who love Him. And walk according to his purpose. Are we together? Are, you make, are we making sense here, dearly beloved? The first that I saw in Romans chapter is uh, chapter 8, there is no condemnation. The second is no comparison. You might be suffering, friends. Who among us here is not suffering? Uh, those up at the back, are you are you suffering? I think you're happy there at the back, but those are at the farther back. Are you suffering? You're smiling, so that means your life is lengthened. Alright? Are we all suffering? Because the entire creation of God is groaning and it is suffering. But there is no comparison to what God has prepared for you and for me when He comes again. The third and the last that I would like to go with you today is the gist of my sermon. Nothing. I just like to go straight because of the benefit of time. Verse 36. 
8. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, great thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in... Dearly beloved, there's no condemnation if you are in Christ through the Spirit. No comparison in glory. You're suffering now, that is nothing compared to what God has given to all, what God has prepared for us. Remember in John 14, 1, 2, 3? That is nothing. And the last that I saw, I call it, you can call it no separation, but I will say no consolation. Cancellation in love. When my wife married me, she did not sign a waiver that says, if we are not going to be in good terms, I would like to cancel our love for each other. Do we have that clause in our, in our vows? Do you have that? How many of you here would love? Uh, never mind. <laughs> if we are in Christ, no cancellation. What did I say? Is it death? Is it death? Is it the rejection of other people? Is it the criticism of other people? Is it the problems that we are facing? Is it our weakness? If you're in Christ, there is no consolation. The, third, the three points that I would like to summarize for you here before I sit down. Nothing. Listen to me now, friends. These are the points. Nothing can change what Christ accomplished on the cross. Listen to me, the second point. Nothing can discourage us if we stay in Christ. Could I hear an amen? amen. Let me repeat that. Nothing can discourage us if we stay in Jesus. Another good news that I would like to share with you today. Nothing can change our birth. Why? Did you change your birth? You could change your face, but not your birth. Right? You could change your name, but not your birth. Could you change your birthday? Yeah? Uh, you could change your birthday? On your passport? Listen to me now, dearly beloved. This is what Paul was saying, and I don't have the luxury of time of telling you, uh, reading it to you. Nothing, nada, zero. No way, Jose. Uh, not anything. There is just nothing. Nothing can change your birth. But the good news is nothing can change your adoption in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. For those of you who understand the message, it's very clear. We may fall. We may stumble. We may be, we may be attacked. We may be persecuted. Or in fact, condemned by the world. Condemned by others in our own backyard. Or outside of our backyard. But the good news is, I would like to read to you from the pen of inspiration. My favorite author, by the way. Ellen G. White. Acts of the Apostles. Page 375. It says, listen to this. Hold on to your seat. Israel stumbled and fallen. What did I say? But this, the good news. But this did not make it impossible for them to rise again. I'd like to put my name here. Mark Lastimoso stumbled and fallen. But this did not make Mark or make it its life impossible for Mark to rise again. Because Jesus was resurrected. And so I am in Christ. I will be resurrected. Maybe not in the future as well, I, I should say, maybe not only in the distant future, but I will be resurrected now in my old man of sin because I want to walk in Jesus. I don't want to walk in the, in the wide or in the wide gate. I want to walk in the narrow way that leads to life. I don't want to be in the, in the way of death. 
We may stumble and fall. We may be, we may be messy. What did I say? What is then another word that could describe mess? We might be ruined. Our credit is gone. We cannot, we cannot loan. Our life is in tattered. Maybe we have so many problems, a secret sins that we are struggling, nobody saw us. We are just a mess. But I would like to tell you here, you might be in a mess, but this did not, this that make it impossible for you and me to rise again. For even though Israel rejected Jesus, God did not reject His people. Even though we reject Jesus in what we say and what we do, Jesus did not reject us. Now remember, this is the truth. This is the truth that I would like to preach to you, my friends. It was not us who was looking for God. It was God looking for us every time. Remember Adam? It was God who was looking for Adam. It was not Adam looking for God. No condemnation. No comparison in the future. No cancellation. No separation. May God bless you all today. Amen. As we continue to read Romans chapter 8. For those of you who have been blessed by this message. And you would like to renew your walk with Jesus. I'd like to make an appeal. You know, this morning I was just so happy. This is my happiest time to preach. Could you tell? But I'm so very blessed and happy to preach here in Glenda, Filipino. Could you say amen? Hallelujah. Don't be shy. Amen. This is the happiest time, I think, in my four years of, of, uh, of serving, of speaking. I thought this was the happiest, and I'm, I'm right. Because the news is good. Nobody can condemn me because I'm, I'm not walking in the wide gate. Okay? I'm walking the narrow gate. I'm with Jesus now, friends. Nobody can compare what I will be given. A good house in the world, nothing can compare that. Even if you give me a new car, I will accept that. But it's not comparable. Today, I just thought, uh, a few days ago, I was in the payroll department of our conference to discuss about my tax. And uh, somebody was, I will not mention the name, but somebody was asking, Oh, which church are you from? Uh, Glendale Filipino. Oh, I have a good news for you. We are studying. <clears throat> We're studying the possibility that you'll be given a race. Pray for that, friends. <laughs> Not just only because I'm in Glendale, but I'm in Jesus Christ. <laughs> but I'm in Jesus Christ, amen? Will you be happy if I race? I have a race in Jesus Christ? Yes. Because I like to tell you the good news. You too can have a race in Christ Jesus. I'd like to make an appeal. You know, our church, Lenda Filipino, had stumbled and fallen. Can I hear an amen? Uh, that's very weak. Let me repeat this. Lenda Filipino had fallen and stumbled at times. Could we recognize this? But this did not make Lenda Filipino make it for her impossible to rise again. Would you say hallelujah? And if you're with me, we're on the same page. And you would like to say, Lord, I want to revive. I'd like to make a firm commitment to be in Christ Jesus. I want you to be bold as the music is playing. Why don't you join me here in a moment of prayer as we seek God's will for individual lives. If that is you, why don't you join me here as we pray before we'll have our closing song. I'd like to, I'd like to give this time to you.
If you have heard the message of God, no condemnation. No comparison in suffering. No cancellation of love or separation. If that is you, for those of you who are shy, just, just bow your heads. Can we all bow our heads as the music is playing? This is not only an emotionally electrifying charge, but this is the good news for all of us today that nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. Nothing, zero, nada, if we walk according to the flesh, according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. Could you come forward? I'd like to pray with you. I'd like to kneel and pray with you. If you'd like to kneel with me, I'd like to have a special prayer. Come, come. Just be close today. I'd like to have a special prayer of revival, a, spray, a special prayer of recommitment for all of us who are in need of prayer. For those of you who are probably just wanting to be in your seats, just you can do so. You could just, you could just bow down your head silently and tell God about the, the, you know, your struggles and, and tell God about what you need today. For those of us who are here kneeling in the sanctuary, falling on the cross of Jesus, hoping to rise again, we would like to continue. Are we all there? Father in heaven, we have heard a message. It is not just an emotional message. It is just uh, histrionics, or it is not just uh, mere words, blah, 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 blah. No. These words are from the scriptures in Romans 8. And if we believe in Jesus, we believe in His words in Romans 8. And so Lord, today, with bowed heads and bended knees, we would like to tell you, we are wretched, miserable, in need of you today. Maybe we forget, sometimes we walk according to the flesh, the, the, the white gate. Lord, divert us now as we drive back to the narrow gate. We'd like to walk according to the Spirit. And Lord, I want you to help us all consume all the sins from our hearts. Consume, Lord, the desire for supremacy, the jealousy, the envy, the greed, the lust. The brokenness. Because today we are making a recommitment to be in Christ Jesus. Lord, revive your church. Revive us today. And thank you so very much. Thank you so much for the good news. That we are free, that we are faithful, that we are for you. Your life for our life, Lord. We would like to be closer to you in this crucial, critical moment of our existence in this world. We want to be closer to you and we want to be in the side of Jesus. And so praise you, Lord. Thank you for accepting us. Thank you so much for your word. That nothing can separate you and I, you and us, in your love for us. So we consciously choose you today. And we want to walk in the nearness of your spirit. I pray in Jesus' name. Those who love the Lord say, Amen. 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 Amen.